Warning. This video was handcrafted for people who already have low self-esteem and now derive pleasure from being verbally curb stomped. If you aren't perchance a masochist, or are perhaps afraid you might enjoy it, kindly piss off. Welcome to Deep Rock Galactic. Sup morons, my name's Windette, and welcome back to Idiot Central. You dumbasses have already seen what horrors this game has to offer, so how about we delve a little deeper, shall we? Today on Explained in Insults, we're covering the hazards of DRG. And before you elitist fox get right back into my comments section, I'm only covering the stuff that matters here. Anything I miss, you can figure out yourselves, lazy pricks. Now, where was I? Ah, yes. <clears throat> First of all, context. Hi, I'm Windette. And welcome back to my channel where we bully the innocent into places filled with insects, pain, and suffering for no better reason than for my own enjoyment. If you happen to know anyone who you're convinced is a total masochist, or who perhaps might just be in denial and needs a little push, please send them this video. Who knows, maybe if you follow my instructions well enough and behave yourselves, I'll say something nice for once. Alright, so let's get started. Did you guys know we have a second channel yet? We post videos there way more frequently than on this one, and of course, it's only the most cursed content that should never see the light of day. So if you want to support me in ways other than watching these dumb videos, subscribe and enjoy the ensuing chaos. Now, aside from that, let's begin by asking the most obvious of questions. Like, what the fuck is a hazard? Put short, a hazard is something that'll put our hopeless little dwarfs here into even more danger. This could be greater enemies, lower levels of oxygen, a player with an IQ so low that if they literally ceased touching the keyboard, their chances of survival would increase tenfold. Stuff like that. Now, you may be thinking that hazards are something to avoid, especially given who's currently sitting at the controls, but it might be worth noting that higher hazards in DRG grant you greater rewards. Imagine that. Being rewarded for suffering. Now, who do we know that likes that? At this point, it should be quite clear that this game was practically made for you idiots, so how about we explore all the different ways you can torture yourself down here? Part one! All right, let's start with the absolute basics first so that I don't accidentally fry your pathetic brains out. Once you've waddled your way over to the control desk, the first thing you'll notice after clicking a mission is a pop-up just beside your cursor. Over here, you dumb fuck! It shows the mission type, your objectives, and about halfway down, a hazard rating. As I said in my last DRG video, click here to see that, the higher the hazard rating, the greater the rewards. In other words, the more you let yourself struggle, the more you get praised, a system I thoroughly endorse. And how about we break them down first so your minuscule attention span can stay fucking focused? Where the hell are all the enemies? Why is it so quiet? What is this, Minecraft? I want to use my fucking guns on something! Yes! Finally! A swarm! And it's over. Great, this sucks. Oh, there are bugs this time! Though I'm still spending most of the mission walking from point A to point B. This still sucks. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Just enough enemies to keep me shooting at stuff between mission objectives and the added bonus of actually getting rewarded for spending time down here. This is a nice middle ground. I like it here. I don't see why anyone would want to go any higher. Wait, I- I didn't want to go this high. Take me back, please! I don't want to be here! I- Hello? Oh god. Oh god, wait, what are my objectives? Fuck, what am I supposed to do here? Bosco, where are you? Where's Molly gone? I'm done with this hellhole. There's no way anyone can beat this alone. How the fuck could the game get any harder than this? Two. Hey, still alive, I see. Good, because I'm not done with you idiots yet. Now get off your ass and listen up. Maybe that way you'll finally learn something. If you thought the hazard rating was the only surprise Deep Rock Galactic has in store for you, you'd have to be fucking stupid. Pairing up with our favorite little torture device here are something called mission modifiers. These little mutators spice up the kind of pain you'll be receiving down there, so let's see how they work, shall we? Once again, I'm grouping them up into little bite-sized chunks so that your useless brain doesn't get bored after 10 fucking seconds. Got it? Type 1! 
More than you bargained for. There are seven modifiers that affect the enemies of Hoxies, and they each do one of two things. They either spawn in a shitload more of a single type of enemy, or just make everything more annoying. The mutators that affect spawn rates are for cave leeches, exploders, macteras, and swarmers. The macteras and swarmers just make you feel like you've accidentally walked into the wrong part of town and should be leaving. Very soon. And the other two modifiers can be summed up in one sentence. Holy shit, where did you come from? I wasn't prepared oh, for this, and now oh, I'm dead. The? Some things to note, specifically to stop you lot from dying so much, are that swarmers are a cakewalk if you know how to swing a pick around, or happen to have Bosco. Seriously, he's way too good at this. I had to force him to hold this pole the whole time in order to get footage. Another tip is that exploders can be disarmed by shooting them in the fucking mouth, and cave leeches suck, no matter where they are. Stop pretending like this modifier somehow makes things worse. There be creatures hiding in the ceiling again. If your brains haven't turned to mush already, then you might have noticed that there are still three modifiers I haven't covered yet, two of which make enemies deal more damage, and the other one only becomes a problem if you have an intense inability to stay focused. Regenerative bugs honestly just speaks for itself, so I'm not going to cover it. Fuck you, figure it out yourself. Also, Steve can't die now. Lethal enemies causes all melee damage to get doubled for all you sick fucks who enjoy being bitten and choked to death, and elite enemies spawns in the big boys, who are faster, stronger, healthier, and won't pay for child support even after forcing you to the ground and stopping your legs from working. I don't exactly need to read my comments section to know that at least one of those things is a kink you lot have. Do I still have your attention? There's no way your brains are fried already. Type 2! Enemies suck. The next mutation type on our list just adds a whole bunch of new shit to the game. There are three here in total, so let's break them down one by one. Topping our list lies parasites. These creepy little shits will slither out from the corpses of any bug large enough to house them, but they're no more dangerous than swarmers. If you degenerates have spent as much time watching hentai as I think you have, I'm sure you'll find something very familiar about the constant wet tentacle noises. Continuing on with a mutation that's only as scary as you lot are stupid, haunted caves will spawn in Shire. A quiet, slow, creepy, and unkillable version of a glyphid bulk detonator whose sole purpose <laughs> get it, is to track you down and make things a little hotter than you bargained for. Be it through solid rocks and rubble, no matter how far you go, it will always find you. If you want to survive a mission with this modifier on, your best bet, and my only suggestion, is to just keep moving, you dumb fuck, it's not that hard! If you're fast enough, you can abuse Shire's attack radius to damage and dispatch of any bugs around them, sometimes even dealing the final blow to a fucking dreadnought! What is it with exploders and killing bosses before I can? Finally, on our new additions list is something that would be very little to write home about, but DRG recently got an update. The Rival Presence modifier originally only added shredded drones and patrol bots. Sniper, burst, and repulsion turrets would then later be added to the missions involving the industrial sabotage tag. But since the most recent update, things have gotten a little more interesting. Turrets, shredders, and bots can now spawn on any mission type involving a rival presence modifier, and while this alone was enough to change up gameplay quite substantially, something else was lurking in the shadows. If you thought stationary turrets and some annoying drones were all you had to worry about down here, Perhaps you haven't been on Hoxies long enough. Whether the mission you're on is modified or not, there's something down here with you. If, while on the job, you happen to hear the sounds of a dwarf desperately shouting for help, stop what you're doing and listen closer. Something's off. The voice is staticky, fragmented, robotic. That's not one of our dwarves. In fact, I don't think it's even living. A nemesis. Run! Run and shoot, damn it! Keep your distance and don't let it grab you. Its body is slow, but its arms are fast. Get too close and you can kiss your dumbass goodbye. If you do get caught, you better pray it bashes itself into the terrain or gets shot enough to drop you. Keep your distance and shoot any part that glows, or risk losing what few brain cells you have remaining. Once you've finally dealt enough damage to kill it, congratulations. Would you like to see your reward for surviving? Why do you think you dwarfs would believe? Nothing! Absolutely nothing! The screen starts filling with teleporting explosive mines, and you just get to enjoy the feeling of having wasted all of your ammo and patience with nothing to show for it! Ahem, <clears throat> sorry, where was I? Oh, right! Type 3! 
Safety is optional. All right, the last two modifiers on our list affect Hoxies itself. Specifically things designed to cause inordinate amounts of stress. The first being shield disruption, a modifier that, put short, makes all damage permanent. Unlike the times when you got to shrug off small amounts of fall damage, spikes, thorns, and anything nipping at your feet without batting an eyelid, this modifier makes all those pesky things stack up over time. You don't get to sweat the small stuff. If you were to sum this modifier up in a single sentence, it would probably look something like, oh god, my health is a lot lower than I thought it'd be. Please don't hurt me. I'm small and fragile and I don't want any trouble and any amount of damage will only bring me closer to my inevitable death before unfortunately meeting your untimely end to something incredibly mundane. And finally, the last modifier, an environmental hazard that lowers the oxygen in the atmosphere to unsurvivable levels. If you thought Hoxies was an accommodating planet, perhaps removing your right to breathe will fix that perspective. Thankfully, management very helpfully strapped some gas tanks to Molly, so you'll be fine as long as you can stick close by. Oh god, fuck, where's Molly? Not this terrain mine any faster? Come on, come on, hurry up, please, you're so slow! Oh no, where's Molly again? I have to get up there? What do you mean it's too steep? Come on, you stupid gun, work! Yes, finally! Come on, come on! I hate this thing! Okay, so it turns out that strapping some very important canisters to a robot specifically engineered to cause you hell was not a good idea. But if you thought the hazards ended there, you're in for one hell of a surprise. With crazy in-game bonus events, boss fights designed to make you flail your arms in panic, and the same goddamn pipes that keep breaking every 10 seconds, Hoxies has a lot more in store for you. These are the hazards of DRG, and my god do they make this game fun! Hey, thanks for watching. As you probably guessed, these videos take a hell of a long time to create, so I appreciate anyone who takes the time to show this to others and show their support. If you were referred here by a friend, I'm glad you made it all the way to the end. Except you definitely just proved to them how much of a masochist you are. Not that I mind. If you'd like to support me in ways other than watching these dumb videos, then perhaps go for something even dumber and check out the second channel. And as always, I'm Windette. You're a moron, and I'll see you idiots next time.